In this video, we're going to be building a custom power supply for this 30 inch Apple Cinema display. Now I actually got this display off eBay uh, for only $100, and I say only, uh, but $100 is actually a really good deal for one of these 30 inch displays, especially off eBay. Um, but uh, yeah, and this is actually a fully working unit, uh, it was advertised in the listing as being fully working. Now of course this display did not come with its power supply, uh, so that is why uh, I will be making uh, my own power supply for it in this video, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So uh, as you can see the condition of the display is uh, not exactly the best, it does have a few uh, nicks here, down here, uh, there's one little mark up here. Uh, but other than that, it looks like it's in pretty good shape, just needs a little bit of a clean, that's just a little bit of dust as you can see uh, from packaging material. Uh, but yeah, it just needs, just got to take this tape off from the uh, packing material that it came with and yeah, it should be a good, to good, nice usable display. And a 30 inch display uh, has quite a high resolution, uh, I think it's 2560 by 1600, uh, so that'll be really, really nice to use. So anyway, getting on with the uh, power supply, um, instead of getting an official power supply, which go for about uh, over $100 on eBay, and that is for the 180 watt cinema display power supply that these displays need, uh, I ended up picking up this, which is just a generic LED light power supply. Uh, it is a 24 volt output, which is what these monitors need, uh, and it has a maximum output power of 240 watts. Now, of course, these displays only require 180 watts, uh, so this power supply should be perfectly fine. And uh, by the way, I got this off eBay for about uh, $20 or so. So it's definitely a much, much better deal uh, than getting a $100 power supply uh, just to use with this. So um, let's go over and uh, look at it for a minute here. So on the front of it here, uh, you can see we've just got a bunch of screw terminals. Now, any inputs... Uh, power input and power output is both connected through these screw terminals. So you can see right on the end here we have the uh, live and neutral uh, rails for the AC power line. Uh, we've also got a ground for the AC power line. Uh, right here we've got three uh, ground for the DC output and we've got three uh, positive lines for the uh, or 24 volt rails for the uh, DC output there. Now in theory you could hook up you know, three things to this, but when we're driving it off, uh, or we're driving this uh, thing that requires 180 watts off it, you probably don't want to put any more load on this power supply. So right over here, we've got a uh, voltage adjust. So what I'm going to do before I hook the monitor up to it is I'm just going to test the uh, power output before I, you know, hook it up to the monitor and adjust this to make it exactly 24 volts. Um, so when you get these power supplies, if you get one for your display, the first thing you're going to want to uh, be aware of is this switch right here. Now this switches it, uh, as you can see on the top here, this switches it from accepting a 110 volt input to a 220 volt input. Now it is very important that before you hook this thing up to power, you set this switch to the proper voltage. Uh, if you don't, you could cause uh, major damage to the power supply, or if you have something hooked up to the output, it could uh, damage that device. So of course, uh, make sure this switch is set to the proper voltage before connecting anything to it. Um, but as you can see in my case, uh, the switch is on this, uh, on the right side, which is 220 volts. So before I power this on, I will need to switch that back uh, to 110 volts. So with that out of the way, uh, we'll go ahead and begin this process. Now, I'm not actually going to cut the power connection off of the monitor like most people do. So the way these monitors work is there's one big cord that connects to the back of it and then it splits off into four different connectors. So we've got, of course, uh, the DVI for the video input. Uh, we've got a FireWire port, which gives uh, the FireWire to the ports on the back of the monitor. Um, we've got a USB port, which both provides the USB hub on the back, uh, allows that to work, and it provides functionality uh, for these capacitive buttons on the side, so you can, you know, turn the monitor, or you can actually use this to turn the computer on and off, uh, and you can change the brightness of the monitor with these controls. And it will allow you to change the brightness uh, within the system as well. So, um, what a lot of people do when they do this modification is they cut this proprietary connector off. 
Now, in my case, I'm actually not going to do that. And the reason for that is I actually have a connector that will fit this cable. I can actually get one uh, off of a dead Mac Mini logic board that I have because uh, the Mac Mini power cord that connects to the Mac Mini from its power supply uh, has this exact same connector on it. So I can just unsolder the connector from the Mac Mini board uh, and then just solder some wires to it and connect it to the uh, output rails on this power supply with a little bit of wire. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So to get started, I'll go ahead and switch over to my soldering station and we will begin by removing the uh, power connector from a dead Mac Mini logic board that I have. So I will be right back. All right, so you can see I've gotten our dead Mac Mini logic board right here. And uh, so the power connector is right there. So as you can see, uh, it does have the same exact plug as the cinema display. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it from this board. Now the first thing of course we're gonna do is we're going to uh, apply some flux here and then we're gonna use my solder wick uh, to remove all the solder from the connector. So first thing of course to do is to get some flux here um, and apply it to the connector pads. All right, and that should be good. So now we're gonna just go ahead and add a little bit of leaded solder just to make it a little bit easier uh, to melt the uh, lead-free solder used on this board. So let's just melt all that. All right, and that looks pretty good. So I don't, oh, I guess, I don't know if these are also part of the connector. Let's see. Okay, yes, those are as well. So we've got to get uh, these little square pads that hold the, uh, the outside of the connector on as well. Alright, so now we should be ready to um, go ahead and uh, wick all the solder off. So let me get it as much off of my iron as I can. So that looks about good. So now we'll take the solder wick and get a fresh piece of it here. And then what we're gonna do is just take it and hold it on each joint, just like this. And just kind of let it sit there and eventually uh, what will happen is it will melt the solder and the solder wick will wick it all out. So you just gotta give it a minute. Just like this. Okay, so it's starting to wick it out of there. Alright, so as you can see, I've gotten the connector removed and it is right here. 
As you can see, it isn't quite as clean as I had hoped. It did burn the plastic a little bit, uh, but it is still in uh, pretty good shape and will definitely still work. Uh, so you can see the pins right there. There's two center ones and then those other three. So um, you can see sort of how the connector is laid out. So I'm going to just take my multimeter and figure out which part of each cable each of the pins go to and uh, then I'll match that up with the pinout of the uh, cinema display and then we should be able to use this connector so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that wired up uh, and I'll go ahead and resume the video alright so I've just taken a brief uh, look and doing and uh, I've done some continuity tests on the connector here and I've drawn a little diagram to show uh, what pins are connected where. So if you look at the bottom of the connector, you can see that it has two pins on this side and three pins on this side. And that is represented up here uh, just like this. So you can see the two on that side and uh, the three on the other side there. So this top pin here connects to the bottom two pins of the connector. And the bottom most pin of that row of three connects to the top and uh, yeah so now we can kind of get an idea of uh, which pins connect to where uh, so I know where to wire them so in this case um, I believe the uh, power for the monitor are on the outer two the ground or negative is in the the second to second up and second down and the middle pin is the sense pin but we're not even going to connect that uh, because that is only used for the monitor be to be able uh, to determine what wattage power supply is connected to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and get some wires ready. And I'm going to go ahead and wire all these pins together uh, like they're supposed to be. For example, I'm going to wire that pin to that one because these both have the 24 volts on them. And I'm going to wire these two pins together because they go to there and there and there and there. And uh, that's exactly how it's supposed to connect. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get it all wired up. And uh, then I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so you can see here that I have just finished wiring up the connector. Uh, so you can see the black wire is going to the two ground pins. Uh, and the white wire is connected to this pin, which I jumped with this little piece of wire to the first pin there. And that will connect the uh, 24 volts to there and there. And then the two black ones connect to, the, or the black wire connects to there and there. Oh, sorry, you can't really see that. Yeah. So the black wire connects to there and there. And the white wire connects to there and there, which is what carries the 24 volts. Uh, and then, of course, the center pin, uh, as you can see on here, uh, I kind of jumped over it with that wire, so it's not actually connected to anything. So with that, uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook up this AC power cord that I've cut here. So you can see uh, the end of it right here. It's just a standard three prong. Um, and then we'll, of course, hook it up appropriately. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the way this goes is black is live. So that goes here where the L is. I don't know if you can really see that. But yeah, that is live. Neutral is the white. So that'll go right here. And then the ground or earth connection is the green, and that will connect uh, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the AC cord wired up, and uh, then we'll go ahead and power it up and actually check the voltages and make sure that they're, pro they're appropriate. Uh, so I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and hooked up the power supply. It is plugged in, as you can see, with the green light. And I've hooked my multimeter probes to a couple of the voltage outputs there. And uh, as you can see, we are getting 24.2 volts, which is just perfect. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is, uh, of course, unplug the uh, power supply, hook up my uh, custom connector that I made, and uh, which is right here. And then we will finally be able to test out the monitor. So uh, let me get this hooked up, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've gotten the monitor all hooked up. You can see I have it plugged into my custom power supply. The power supply is plugged in, and I've also got it connected to this Mac Mini just for some testing. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. And it does. Look at that. Beautiful. 
All right, let's go ahead and wait till it boots up here, and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. I don't actually have a mouse and keyboard hooked up to it, so we'll not be able to do anything, but uh, let's just see what she looks like. I'll just uh, resume the video once it's done booting. All right, well, as you can see, the machine has, done, has uh, finished booting up here. And like I said, I don't have a mouse and keyboard hooked up to it, so I can't actually log in. Uh, but it looks amazing. Now the resolution isn't right uh, yet, because uh, the uh, Mac Mini didn't adjust to it. But uh, I'm not even sure the uh, GMA 950 in the Mac Mini supports this resolution. Uh, but okay, it says there's no keyboard. But uh, yeah, so far it seems to be working perfectly fine. Uh, you can see it is still plugged in uh, via that custom power supply. Uh, and yeah, it is looking really, really good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this Mac Mini down. And uh, then we'll go ahead and take all this tape residue off and get that all cleaned up. And then I'm going to hook this up to my Mac Pro on my main setup. Uh, so I will be right back once it's all hooked up. All right, so as you can see here, I have just finished uh, kind of hooking up the 30-inch cinema display to my main setup. Uh, you can see my Mac Pro is right here. And uh, we've got uh, the custom power supply right here, plugged into the monitor through the custom Mac Mini connector there. Uh, and of course, the AC power is connected. Um, we do already have it turned on, and uh, you can see the green LED is on right there. So, let's just go ahead and power on the machine. All right, you can see the LED came on on the monitor there. And it's working. So let's just go ahead and wait till the system finishes booting here. And the resolution looks really nice already. So let's go ahead and log in. Wow, and there it is. That just looks so nice. It's huge. So let's just go ahead and uh, to about this Mac real fast and take a look at the resolution. So you can see it detects it as an Apple Cinema HD display, the 30 inch model, uh, with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. Now that is quite a large resolution and uh, it definitely looks really, really nice on this display. Now, just to put it into perspective, that is almost the uh, same resolution as a Retina display on the 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, those displays are 2880 by 1800, so just a little bit more or a little bit higher resolution than this display. So yeah, as you can see, it kind of screwed up on my desktop icons, but you know, I'll fix that. Uh, but let's go ahead into Launchpad here, and uh, wow, that looks that looks pretty cool. So let's uh, yeah, not laggy. Um, let's go ahead and open a uh, Safari window here and see what that looks like. Wow, that just looks that just looks so cool. Uh, so let's minimize it there. Wow. So yeah, that's that looks really really nice. So uh, yeah, that has been the uh, process of creating a custom power supply uh, for this 30-inch Apple Cinema HD display. Hope you enjoyed this video.